Hi everyone. Today we have Jim Cook, who's the Regional Director for Australia and New Zealand for a US technology vendor in the cybersecurity space called Ativo Networks. They're focused on threat detection and they address a new segment. They think of it as deception. Let's find out more. From an IT manager's point of view, Jim, yeah, someone that hasn't worked with Ativo Networks before, what problem are you guys solving? Yeah, thanks, Sean. Um, so we're dealing with a, quite a knotty problem that most IT managers at the moment are struggling with and security managers, which is what do you do after, your, after an attack has got through your perimeter defences? So um, depending on what bit of research you read, the average dwell time at the moment is somewhere between a few weeks and a few months. So attackers are inside the network for that long. Um, and with our solution, we can bring that down to hours or in some cases minutes. So um, the way that we do that is by seeding the different attack paths that an attacker might use with deceptive or decoy bits of information. So um, we kind of think of it as turning the tables on the attacker. So traditionally, the defensive team has had to get it right all the time. Otherwise, not only is there an attack, but there's a breach and information gets lost or the system gets locked. Um, but now the attacker is in that boat because if they touch any of the decoy bits of information that we've seeded throughout the network. Um, could be a document, could be a credential, could be a server, could be a PC. Um, then they get detected. And if they continue their attack, if they use that information, then um, the attacker, the, the defense team knows that they have been attacked, um, but the attacker doesn't know they've been detected. So they progress their attack. And because they're in our decoy network, the defense team sees absolutely everything that the attacker is doing. So they see what malware they're using to compromise systems, that what, um, what files they're dropping, um, where they're trying to go, what they're trying to get to. So it really sort of changes the way, the, the balance, if you like, between, between what's happening, it really slows attackers down and causes them to distrust the tools that traditionally they've been able to, um, to rely on quite heavily. So that's got some different value depending on the kind of customer that you are um, or kind of organization you are. So in Australia, for example, we've got some customers who have a very light on security people. They've maybe got one or two security staff, but they may be managing hundreds or thousands in some cases of desktops and servers. So they don't really have time to mess around with the volume of data that's available to them. Um, they, they need to know when there's an attack and they need to know how to deal with it. So, um, Companies like that buy our technology because we only really create an alert when there is an attack. Um, and the information we provide allows them to act, to, to make a sensible decision on how they're gonna respond. So we integrate, for example, with the majority of the, the major security vendors out there. So for example, if we detect an attack, we can send a command to, to CrowdStrike or Carbon Black or someone like that to quarantine the machine or to your name, your firewall vendor, we can, we can create a, um, add an IP address to a block rule. So really simplifying the way that a small company deals with, with an attack that they haven't been able to deal with previously. And at the other end of town, the big end of town, where there's maybe 100 or 200 people that work in security, they have a, a bit of a different view on things, which is, yes, they want to detect attacks early, but they also want that really rich information that only a sort of deception technology can provide because um, they, they want to keep the attacker in the decoy network for as long as possible and really understand what it is they're trying to do and how they're trying to do it. So that really makes, um, it's one of the things that we, we pride ourselves on is that believability component and really allowing, um, and allowing an attacker to progress their attack, but actually they're in, inside the defenses um, clutches, if you will. I might just quickly share a slide. Um, so if you think like an attacker, um, generally speaking, attackers will, so I think, again, 50, 60% of the time, it's a fish or it's a compromised endpoint, which is what, which is the, the initial point of compromise. So um, from there, there's only certain things an attacker can do to progress their attack. Um, and again, as I said before, we put decoy information in front of all of those. So, um, for example, one of the most common things to do at the moment is use a tool called Bloodhound to query Active Directory. Um, an Active Directory, of course, is designed to tell you everything. So it just provides this, this um, uh, beautiful view of how you can get from the PC that you're on through to the domain controller or the, whatever it is, the system that you're trying to get to. Um, and so we have the ability to 
allow that query to occur, but we feed decoy information into that query. So the attacker does get a beautiful view of the network, but it's not the real network, it's the, it's the deceptive network. Um, if they then use one of the tools to access the, the credentials that are stored in memory, um, which again is a really common thing to do on an endpoint, um, some of those credentials will be real, but others, others of those credentials will be decoys. So, um, and they should look and feel the same, but if, if an attacker uses one of those decoy credentials, they'll log into one of our decoy systems. And again, they get detected that way. Um, they, it's quite common as well to, to live off the land to try and see where you can get to, where is the PC that you started off on connected to. Um, so we connect some decoy share drives, for example, or decoy shares to that, to that system. So again, we try and make it so any kind of observation of the network is going to lead to um, to a detection event and is going to then uh, sort of turn the tables and make it make it a um, an easier play for the for the defensive team. Interesting, um, a, a whole different approach that I haven't heard from other vendors there. And it sounds like you've got uh, solutions that will fit with different parts of the market, especially in the sort of medium space in Australia and New Zealand. Interesting. Um, on, on the new side of things, you know, uh, what are the most recent improvements in your solutions? You know, what, what are the most recent announcements you've made, new products, and sort of why? Yeah, okay. So um, we, our development team and our founders try and think like attackers. Um, so what that means is as new attack methods come along, it's up to us to try and stay ahead of the curve and always have some form of deceptive information that can be put in, in that path. So um, one of the more recent things we released was the, um, what we call AD Secure, which is what I was talking about before, the ability to create a, a decoy network to a, to a blood hand query, or in fact, any query of Active Directory. Um, we're constantly improving the simplicity of our management. Um, we're, we're every week or every couple of weeks, we, we um, announce a new integration with a new security vendor because we don't want to be an additional layer, an additional screen that, that, uh, that a SOC needs to look at we want to be a fully integrated part of their existing system. So um, yeah, so our improvements are, are consistent and many. We're, we're soon to release a new version of our product and we'll have even more to announce then. Okay, interesting. Sounds like you've got a pipeline of things happening as well in many different directions. Okay, and then on your product development team, you know, the, these sort of future plans, what are the things that they laser focus on, the things that they care about most, the, the sort of exciting trends that they are locked into? Yeah, so um, thinking like an attacker drives, drives everything. I think um, the other side of it is listening to feedback from our customers. So, you know, the deception space is still reasonably new. So um, there's always improvements that can be made based on the customer feedback we have. And we're very lucky and we do have um, you know, hundreds of customers around the world from, from, the, to, from the biggest Fortune 10 organizations right through, as I said before, to you know, people with a few hundred staff. So um, it really is a bit of an arms race, I think. We're, we're constantly trying to work out what the next attack vector is going to be uh, and create, create deceptive information that's going to fit right into that and keep the attackers confused, really. The other side of it is the, keeping the cost down. So um, one of the things we hear a lot is, or I've heard particularly in Australia, is one of the main issues that stock managers and CISOs have is burnout of their staff because there's just so much information available. How do you, how do you understand where to focus? So if we can reduce the cost to defend um, and of course respond and create a better ROI for our customers, then that keeps everybody happy and keeps us on the forefront of what's happening as well. And we do that by lowering the operational overhead and maintaining the fidelity of the alerts that we produce. Um, and the, the third thing is by creating, creating more and more automation. So integrations, but also um, using, using our own systems to simplify deployment and response and so on. Interesting. I know every CIO and IT manager loves the idea of automation and reducing the cost to uh, defend your assets. So very interesting. And uh, if, if there was a new um, customer that wanted to get in contact with you guys, how is it best to do it? Um, your website or you have um, system integrators that you work with? Uh, either or both or, or send me a note on LinkedIn. Um, the, um, yeah, we, we, we have a, a good cross section of systems integrators in, in Australia and New Zealand, actually, from um, some of the larger managed service providers um, through to the security specialists. Because the tech's quite new to Australia, um, I found that um, the most value can be added by, by using systems integrators who have deep technical specialism in security. So those are the, 
kind of organizations that I've focused on so far. Okay, I'll make sure I put your LinkedIn details in the bottom of the uh, recording. Thank you, Sean. Uh, that'd be fantastic. Thanks so much, Jim. Um, so this has been Jim Cook, the ANZ Regional Director uh, for Ativo Networks, and we'll have his contact details below. Um, short and sweet, it's the way we all love it. Thank you very much.